All right, this is the moment of truth, the final glue up. Now before I get started, um, I told you I'd talk a little bit about high glue, and so I will. And after I talk about high glue, I'm going to talk about the sequence that I'll go through for the glue up. Before I get started, it's really important if you've never done this before, uh, you saw it earlier, label all your parts. Make sure you know which rung and which end of which rung goes into which mortise and which leg. And this system of glue marking tape makes this almost foolproof. So uh, I highly recommend that. So I've got all these parts labeled. The legs I, I don't worry about at this point other than I've got the right leg and the right hole. However they end up, you can see I can, I can rotate them. You know, the rungs are going to take care of that when I drive them in. However they end up, they end up. Um, so those are in place. I've got everything marked. I've got a stickly manual here that I'm going to use uh, as a cushion when I drive the tenons into the mortises. Um, I'll show you that. I've got my hammer. I've got three um, fairly large Irwin quick clamps. The, things I, the thing I love about these is the, is the travel distance. Now if I were using an F-style clamp um, or a K-clamp, um, you only get as much travel as you have in the screw thread. With these, very quick to adjust and you have infinite travel between fully open and closed, which is nice when you're uh, pulling these together. Because <clears throat> I've got a few damp rags to wipe off the excess glue. You definitely want to wipe off that glue as soon as you uh, drive these home. You'll see me doing that as I go along. Um, and then the high glue. This, in my opinion, is the best high glue pot in the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a crock pot mini cooker. I got it at Target for like $19. And when I initially bought it, you know, it was between a $19 to $25 little unit like this or the super fancy $150 hot pots that you can find at uh, Highland Hardware and other woodworking suppliers. I've tested it, I filled it full of water and put a thermometer in it and it holds almost an exact 145 degree temperature. Perfect. Um, the reason, I don't always use high glue, but when I do, um, I make sure that I mix it at about two parts water to one part high glue. And really the consistency that you're looking for is a real light syrup you don't want it to drip off your brush when you pull it out. You want a little bit of run to it. And I won't be able to pick that up on the camera. So I use a real high grade instrument maker high glue, which is, it's probably no different than the lower grades, except that it's a little bit more refined. It's, it's clearer. It doesn't smell uh, as bad as the other high glues. This does have a slight odor to it. Um, and this is about 190 gram strength. When it comes to gram strength, um, there are various choices. In general, the higher the gram strength, the, the more quickly this is going to set up. Um, you could also use uh, urea, which is a fertilizer. You can buy it at probably some of your local garden centers. I don't use urea for glue-ups like this because I don't really need that extra open time. What it does is it, it allows the glue a little bit more open time. Um, the other benefits of high glue are that if I were to freeze one of these joints when I'm putting it together <clears throat> and it just won't go together, which has happened to me before on a couple of different projects, I'm able to do one of a couple of things. I can put a hot gun on it, wrap it in a wet towel, give it, it takes quite a bit of time, it's not easy, but it can be undone. Um, and the other, the second good thing about high glue, and this is why, why you know, older furniture is able to be repaired, is that High glue will melt into old high glue, whereas modern glues, once they cure, there's no bond. There's no taking wet glue and adding it to old cured glue and, and getting a bond. It just won't bond. If there were a pitfall to it, it's that you have to work very fast. If uh, you're applying this, and you'll see me, I'll do one joint at a time um, and work my way. I'll start with rung number two, I'll go to rung number three, and then I'll end up at rung number one. And just watch as I go along. I'm probably not going to talk because I'll look like a deer in the headlights and uh, probably slightly panicked. You have to work very quickly. So 
That's about all I got to say about the high glue. I highly recommend if you don't already have, um, you know, the experience with high glue and you want to get into it. Uh, it's relatively cheap. You can get a, like a one pound bag and I've had the same one pound bag for years and it looks just like it did when I bought it. Um, two is buy a pot like this. Uh, even if you don't end up, you know, liking it or getting into chair making or doing work where high glue is the most beneficial, you've got a way to warm up your soup or something like that. Uh, again, $20. I bought this at Target. You can probably buy it online. So I've got everything ready, my wet towels, I've got my wedges sitting here. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. I've got my pounding surface. I'm going to move my high glue pot to my stool so it's right next to where I'm working. And uh, I'm going to collect my thoughts here for a second. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and get started. You don't want to put too much uh, glue in these mortises. They are so tight that it is possible that when you're driving this home, you can actually hydraulically lock the joint and you'll never get it to uh, home up, which is a problem. So I put a light surface of glue on everything. I don't care about the mess at this point because I'll clean that up with a wet rag in a minute. It's important that my blue marks are up. Usually it's a little easy to get it started. I'm looking for to make it a little violent, but uh, where I put those knife lines, that's where I'm looking to hone this joint up. So right now I'm comfortably set. I've got one driven home. I go ahead and I'll clear the glue. You get quite a bit of squeeze out because uh, these are just so super tight and uh, this is really a pain in the butt to scrape off later it dries like a crystal which is why uh, it's so good for instruments it resonates it's so hard and, and crystalline that it resonates sound very well and i've uh, got it everywhere so that's the easy part first one it gets a little bit harder as i go i want to make sure i keep my brush in my warm glue. And you'll notice I, I don't take the uh, I don't take my baby jar with my glue in it out of the pot. I just want to keep it as hot as possible while I do this. And then I'll just look, you can see you're looking at that, the long grain of the leg and, and where I put my mark, that's exactly what I want, the, the rotation and the orientation of the, the stretcher in the leg. So that's good. Um, once you get it down to this point, you're not turning it, ever. Okay, so the next thing I did, I mentioned I'm going to put this one in first. I'll go ahead and just set this in place randomly while I put the glue in this mortise and on this ten. Make sure I got my wits about me. Make sure my brush is nice and hot again. You got about, I don't know, you got about 30 to 45 seconds before this gets to a point where uh, the joint could possibly be compromised. So what you'll see me do here is I'll put glue in this mortise, I'll put glue in this tenon, I'll pull these out, I'll get it started um, in the mortise, maybe, maybe halfway down the tendon, a quarter of the way down the tendon, and I'm going to slide these two legs back into the mortises and apply a clamp across the top. I'll be clamping while I simultaneously bang on the ends of the legs, so as these go together, you can see right now that angle would never line up, but outside the leg it'll go in something like that. There's enough flexibility here that when I put that in, apply that pressure and start pounding down on it, I'll just keep looking at this line and making sure that I home that joint all the way. And at that point, that'll be kind of another stopping point. Then I'll move on to this one and then subsequently the next one. I mean, you want to make sure you put the glue in the right mortise. 
It's also important. Nice even coat. You don't want to fret too much here. You want to get this going. Just a little bit there on the end. Pull this leg out. I want to get it started. Now while it's at this phase, I can rotate it a little bit. And that's when I want to put a clamp on. And I try to clamp just directly across. There it goes. Now, just to make sure that I'm home, you can hear that, hear that sound. There it goes. I'll check my, my knife line, I'm going to make sure I'm home, and I'm home. So at that point, the glue is doing its job. If you are using a softwood seat uh, for your stool, you want to make sure you don't drive these home so hard that you can split your seat. With this oak, I'm not that worried about it. So here I am at a stopping point, I'll go ahead and Clean the glue from around this joint. And then any light glue that remains, uh, I typically will sand. Just do a quick hand sanding at about 320 later on, just, just in case there's a little bit of residue, which there usually will be in these areas where I'm wiping it. Okay. So the stretcher number two is in. I'll start with, I'll, I'll move over here to stretcher number three. So I double check my marking that I've got, rung number three. I'm looking here at my mark on the stool, rung number three. And the, this end's going into leg two, and this end's going into leg number three. And we're all good. Um, what I do, instead of gluing both mortises at the same time and trying to get this all together, is I will just glue my leg number two here and this end of the mortise and you'll see me, I'll just take these out, uh, pound this in, make sure it's in the right rotational uh, direction like so, uh, pound that in and then I'll move over here and worry about making this connection next. And you'll see, I did, I did pound these in so they're a little tight. A little persuasion. There's one. There's the other. And you can spread those apart. You can see uh, if you can see the holes. They're now about a half inch inside those at this point. So I lay it down so I can see the hole that I want to glue into. I've got the right stretcher sitting here. I'm going to glue all over my hands. And I'll glue this one up, pound it all the way in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get great coverage on that. about getting it past where it's driven home. The thing I fuss about is the timing. Um, I start that, give it a little twist, make sure that I'm in line. Lift that up. And I'm home. That one was actually a touch loose, or touch looser than I like it to be, but it's okay. Give that a quick wiper. You don't want to flood these. These are just very damp, just lightly damp. Okay. Now I can turn my attention to making the next connection. And again, it'll be similar to the technique for the, for the stretcher between legs two and one, where I'll 
apply the glue in the mortise, apply the glue in the tenon, and just slightly insert it, get my legs back into their holes, and bring it together. And I'll do that with these actually in first. Pull those apart. Get this leg out of the way. Get those down. Alright. Make sure I get the right mortise. And also with high glue, some people will uh, pre-glue, let it dry, and then glue it again. Um, and you can do that. I've never really had much problem. Get that started. And get a clamp on. Again, I'm trying to... So these quick clamps are super duper. And again, you want to make sure that those are in so that you know, all the tension between all these components is working together. And then I can wipe that one off. Well, I apologize. My uh, camera will only record for 20 minutes at the uh, high def frame rate. So you missed the, uh, the last stretcher, which barely made it in, <laughs> um, which is always fun. But uh, I got it. Got it. Lug nut. Fixed it. Um, so what I'll do now is, this has been sitting since it went off. Uh, I went ahead and let this rest for uh, five or ten minutes and uh, cleaned up some blue spots and moved some stuff out of the way. Um, so what you'll see me do now is I'm going to pull the assembly out and glue all three mortises in the legs and the seat. Um, I'll put glue on the ends of the legs. I'll pound them home. And then I'm going to unclamp it. You should be able to catch it in the frame. I'll flip it upside down, put it on the ground, and I'll drive my wedges home. One thing that you want to keep in mind, um, you saw me cut the curves um, in the... Uh, ends of these legs, when, I, when you drive these in like I have, and like you will if you build one of these, um, what you'll see when you flip it over is those curves are now much smaller. And you need to account for that when you create your wedges. These wedges at the ends uh, almost taper to absolutely nothing. So it's important that the ends of those um, are just absolutely very fine. Um, I have run into times when I drive these in and they're the curve closes so much that even at, even with a fine, fine wedge, I still can't get it in. So I'll have to scramble and grab my saw, cut a curve in the top where you'll see the end of the leg exposed, and then drive it, uh, which is a pain. But we'll see how this turns out. It's not the end of the world. And so we'll go ahead and pull these out, glue these up, I'll flip it over, and drive the wedges home. Um, and in this step, I'm not going to put a uh, terrible amount of pressure when I tap these back in. There's really no need to. I just want to seat them. At this point, this probably doesn't even need glue, but... Quite, quite tight. Okay. Once you get one, the other ones will go. Yikes! Okay, so that should now stand on its own. And again, I'm going to work quickly. This time I will take the jar out because i got to get this done. Look at these split. And I really don't care about the mess. Um, not worried about hydraulically locking these joints. 
I'm just worried about getting it done as quickly as possible. And make sure I've got glue on everything. Takes just a bit of arm strength, but do want to work exceptionally fast. I'm not worried about getting glue in that curve. I'm going to put the glue on the wedge. Okay. <laughs> Attempt to put these back in the right way. after I get these driven in, I'm going to quickly flip the seat upside down and clean off that glue. This one is also being difficult. Very difficult. Okay. So I'm going to have to resolve. This is good that this happened. So you can see it. Same on this leg. Another uh, way that I've done in the past and I don't have this problem, but I don't like how thick it makes the kerf, is to cut them on the bandsaw. Cut the kerfs and the legs on the bandsaw. It makes a much wider kerf and it doesn't close up quite as much. Or I should say nearly as much. Thank you. 
Well, you saw it here live. This one is not going in because it is completely closed and my wedge is completely uncooperative. So, just goes to show you how tight that is. Wasted wedge. All that's left is to wipe the glue off from underneath the seat. And this bad boy is done. Thanks for watching.